At 610, we've always been cooking with bourbon, and um, we use bourbon in many different, unique ways. And so there's two reasons why I wanted to write this book. A, when we started thinking about like, oh, what can we do with bourbon? Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to write another book about bourbon, about its history. There's plenty of bourbon history writers. They're much better than me. There's bourbon connoisseurs. Um, I wanted to write. I wanted to treat bourbon as an ingredient, not as a spirit. Right? Mm. So that was the first thing. Like, mm. what, what, you know, when I go, for example, if I'm like at a restaurant, I eat an incredible tomato fish. I start to go down a rabbit hole, and I go, all right, where did this recipe come from? How do you make this dish? What's the recipe? Where does tomato come from? Mm -hmm. Then I'm like, now I want to go to the farm and say, like, well, how did you grow this tomato? Yep. What seed did you use? Where did you get the seed? You know, you kind of go down that rabbit hole. So then I started to go, okay, so bourbon isn't a cocktail, but it's an ingredient. Then I want to start thinking about those questions to, to bourbon. So then I'm like, all right, so what makes and this is a very interesting question. It's a very simple question, but a lot of people have trouble answering it, which is, where does the flavor of bourbon come from? Does it come from the corn? Does it come from the yeast? Does it come from the barrel? Does it come from, and obviously the answer is a combination of it. Yeah. But what contributes to what in that final flavor, right? So like, if I say there's smokiness and leather and hay and caramel, what made it taste like? And even for some of the masters, it's like it's kind of a mystery, which I think is fascinating. That is, mm. it is, for lack of a better word, magic. Right? So when you have that, so I'm like, all right. So then I got really curious about what is it. So we kind of divided it into five categories, which was corn, fire, wood, yeast, and copper. Copper being the, the still. And then we started mm -hmm. to. to Go deep dive into it. And the one thing, like, I'll see you in the book, like, when I went to, uh, then I'm like, okay, you got an oak barrel. Where's the oak barrel come from? Where's the oak stage? Where's the oak stage come from? It comes from a tree. Where's the tree come from? And I didn't realize this, so I went to a town called Gravel Switch, Kentucky, on the eastern side. And, um, you know, all of a sudden, I'm like, okay. So when you think, okay, it's an oak tree farm, and I'm thinking, like, it's just like a tomato farm, there'll be rows and rows of oak trees. Uh, but it's not, it's just a forest. Mm -hmm. And so then I meet the guy who's in charge of managing the forest. So now I'm reading books on forest. And <laughs> <laughs> so you couldn't busy, every time you find one more thing to yeah. learn about, then you go, huh. And then he's talking, I thought he was going to sit there and talk about trees, and he's talking about wildlife. I'm like, what does this have to do with bourbon? But it's all connected. And when, mm -hmm. when, you, when you do that, you see it, you, you realize like there's this entire world about bourbon that I have no idea about. Because I'm just drinking it, you know. <laughs> um, and then I'm going, well, these oak trees take 80 years to mature, 80 to 100 years to mature. And so there's this guy, and I'll never forget it, you know, we're, we're going around one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. And we come to a clearing where they have, like, it's the new. Um, new pasture, right? So they're, they're raising the new oak trees. And you know, they, they protect, they treat these trees like they're just babies, you know, they really protect them. And they manage the forest and the over remote story and all that stuff. And they get there's like a little sprout that's three feet long, you know, the new thing that's prepared with. And he looks at this tree and he goes, or the sprout, and he goes, my granddaughter will cut down this tree. You know? And it gave me goosebumps to think about that because his business is thought in terms of generations. And then you think like, all right, so then that tree, uh, so we go to the store and we order a glass of bourbon and it's like, oh, this is a six-year-old bourbon. But it's not, if you think about all the ingredients and all the time and all the people that right. go into it, it's 150 years that, of, of knowledge and, and time that's spent in that bar. So it just makes you appreciate bourbon um, in a different way. So. Uh, I really wanted to tell that story about bourbon, that it's not just a cocktail for me, that, it's, that it has all these connectors to all these people. And you know, the corn farmer doesn't necessarily talk to the tree farmer, doesn't necessarily talk to the copper, you know, the guy that hampers the copper still. And 
there's so many worlds that are involved in urban, mm -hmm. and it's not like they all talk to each other. They kind of all live in their own little world, but it all kind of comes together in this magical place called the distillery, where they mix and blend and get this bourbon. So that part of it was really special for me. And after 20 years of being here, thinking I know a lot about bourbon, and I started this, like I realized how little I knew about bourbon. And then from the recipe side, it's, um, I wanted to tell a story about bourbon that was not, you know, I'll, there's a lot of bourbon cookbooks out there, but they're generally all about like grilling and barbecue, which is fine, and there's some recipes that in there too, but I also wanted to tell a story about bourbon, um, that there's so many ways to use bourbon outside of caramel, you know, or, you know put some in your Jack Daniels barbecue sauce. So there's a lot of recipes in the book, but none of the recipes, um, put it this way, if there's a recipe that you can find online that's better than mine, I didn't include it in the book. So all the recipes are very original, um, and they're things that I came up with myself. I didn't want to do like bourbon all or bourbon caramel, things like that, so um, they're all very original recipes. And then, you know, the last piece of it, which is very important to me, is um, as bourbon has skyrocketed in popularity, um, you get a lot of, you know, even 22 years ago when I first came here, bourbon was, you know, popular, but not nothing like what it is now. And I travel the whole country, sometimes the world. And I, and I do this thing if I'm in Miami or if I'm in Denver, I go to a bar and I go, what's the best bourbon you have? You know, I go to a bar and I go, what's the best bourbon you have? Um, and sometimes they pour me bourbon from Colorado. Bourbon from Texas. As you what? know, like bourbon can be made anywhere in the US. Yeah. It doesn't have to be made in Texas. Right. And it's a very curious thing that as bourbon grows in popularity, you're going to have more players and you're going to have people. And I've had some real garbage bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> Colorado, that's the worst bourbon. bourbon. Yeah. And I hear you, man. I hear you. You can't prevent that because legally they're going to do it. Yeah. They're going to be right to. Yeah. But it's not the way, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not saying that it's better here because I'm from here. It's better here because we've had a 200 year head start, and you just can't learn that. You know, I mean, there are bourbon companies that are six years old right now. Like, just you're not going to compete with the, you know, the whole person. So, as as I started to write this book, I thought, in some ways, you need to plant a flag in touch with because more and more you're going to see it. And a lot of times, people don't know. So we know here because it's part of our lifestyle. But you go to Seattle, you go to Houston, or you go, you know, California, they don't know that bourbon's really They just think it's wherever, from San Francisco. Uh, so I just wanted to plant the flag for Kentucky bourbon. So this book is about bourbon, but it's, it's about Kentucky. And it's about Kentucky. And, uh, we, we, I, I, I had a big, um, I would say argument, but with my publisher when we started doing this book, is you know, my publishing company is from New York, and um, they have their own photographers and graphic and things, and I said, I'm not doing this book unless every single person who works on this book is from New York. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, yes. The photographer, to the graphic artist, yes. to the illustrator, food stylist, everyone's from Kentucky. And that was a really important thing because it also, I think it came out to be a better project because they all were, it wasn't just another book. It wasn't just another job. They, they really appreciate it. So, um, but hopefully you'll get to meet them one of these. So we're going to have a big party at some point. But, also, but that's the book. I hope you enjoy it. Um, Oh, and I made a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bartend, but I'm like, I'm not the best bartender. I can't do it. Like, so they've got it. But it's my recipe, but they have it. There's some here. It's a, it's a gold rush book with ginger infused in it. Uh, mm. So enjoy. Thank you guys for coming. Enjoy the book. Thank you, Ed, man. Thank you, Ed Lee. Yeah.